Almost every person that does ministry of deliverance will testify that something begins to happen in the month of October a lot of times where there is a, an intensity of a spiritual warfare. It has to do also some things with Halloween as the month is progressing, as the month is going further. I'm noticing a lot of even my friends who are going through a very difficult and challenging times and a lot of them who are demon hunters, demon slayers, giant killers. And so I want to encourage you today, if, you are ha if this is happening to you, if you're feeling like there is an intense warfare taking place, I want you to stay in because what might be happening is there might be a witchcraft operating against you and is trying to take you out and slow down your ministry, slow down your spiritual journey with God and today we are going to come against that in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is not going to be just teaching. I'm ready to pray. I'm ready to intercede and to stand in the gap with you so that the Holy Ghost, the power of God is going to bring breakthrough. But I sense in my spirit right now that there is a shift taking place. This spiritual warfare is turning into a spiritual victory. God wants this month to finish strong. God wants this month to finish with a triumph. God wants this month to finish with you cutting the head of the Goliath and bringing the head back as a, as a symbol of victory, bringing the spoil back to the camp of God, to bring the spoil back into your local church, into your small group and into your family. I believe that something is happening and that's one of the reasons we felt like doing Race to Deliver at the end of October because we want to finish the month strong. It's one of the reasons we, in, we invited our team and our intercessors to take this week to pray and fast. My friends are as well pulling in right now prayer and fasting in the last week of this month. Why? Because we are not on defensive, we are on offensive. When the devil throws his best shots, when the devil comes in for the kill, when he comes in to discourage, to bring sickness, to bring accidents and destruction, we are going to fight back. Come on somebody. Drop that in the chat if you are ready to fight back. We are going to put up a fight and this fight is not through our natural weapons. This fight is through our spiritual weapons, through the Word of God, through prayer, through fasting, through the blood of Jesus Christ. This fight is through our humility. This fight is through us standing our ground. The Bible says in the evil day, put on the armor of God and then stand. Come on somebody, you got to stand. During this hour, during this season, during this week, during next week, I believe that there will be a shift taking place in the spirit realm. You are going to feel it. There's going to be a shift, but for that shift to happen, you must stand. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat. Stand. You got to stand your ground. You got to stand in your conviction. You got to stand in your faith. You got to stand in who you are. Some of you, you need to start fasting. Some of you, you need to start getting back into God's Word. Some of you, you also need to take care of your health because when the devil comes in, when your health is not good, when your immune system is not good, when your prayer life is not good, the enemy takes advantage but he is going to have no advantage of us because in this evil day, in this evil month, we are not backing down, we are not giving an inch to the devil, we are not going to yield. The witchcraft is going to fail. Every sorcery against us is not going to succeed. We are going to reverse everything that the enemy has thrown our way. Why? Because greater is he who is in us than the one who is in the world. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because no weapon formed against me can prosper. Why? Because the power of the Almighty God, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner, He lives inside of me. I'm part of the kingdom that cannot be broken, that cannot fail. Jesus says, I'm building my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That means right now during this month, the gates of hell, we, we're seeing that the, that the schemes of the enemy, we're seeing the different attacks, different sicknesses, deaths, premature deaths, all kinds of accidents, all kinds of discouragements are piling against you right now. And I want to challenge you my friend, this might have been the worst warfare you have been through but you're about to experience the sweetest victory around the corner. You need to stand your ground. Come on somebody, the sweetest victory that you're about to experience. We are about to see Goliath fall. My God, we're about to see sicknesses healed. We're about to see incurable sicknesses healed. We're about to break the barriers 
in the local churches with salvations of people and with people attending the local church that we have never seen before. I prophesy that into your life. We're about to see our relatives that we prayed for, that we believed for, that we stood for. Uh, they're going to be coming to the Lord. I'm believing that after this season of warfare is going to be the season of spoil. Mm. This is completely not even on my notes, but I, I, I feel prophetic anointing on me right now that this season of warfare is going to turn into a season of spoil where we are going to bring the spoil. The Bible says if you bind a strong man, you can plunder his house. See, some of us cannot plunder the house of the enemy because we haven't bound him. But in order to bind him, we have to come in conflict. We have to come in confrontation. And there is a confrontation taking place in the realm of the spirit. The devil is upset. The devil is mad. All the demons, they're rising up against you. It's not because you've done something wrong. It's because the victory is around the corner because the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you. Come on, if you believe that, drop that fire emoji in the chat. If you are with me, if you're just tuning in to YouTube or re-watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up and share that with people. We're going to be ministering and those of you watching me on Instagram and on TikTok, make sure that you jump on YouTube because that's where we're going to be. I'm going to go into ministry on YouTube. I'm going to do a YouTube, a Facebook and TikTok just for a short time and then jumping into YouTube. Come on somebody, if you believed in this prophetic word that I'm releasing in my spirit, that spoil is around the corner sweet victory, I'm not talking about any kind of victory, sweet victory is around the corner. Goliath shouted for 40 days. He intimidated for 40 days, but a rustic young boy named David. Mm, do I have any Davids in the chat right now? Do I have any Davids in a YouTube, on YouTube right now? A rustic boy named David who had the anointing, who was being prepared for such a time as this in the back wilderness, in on the back, behind the scenes. Nobody was seeing him. He was ignored. He was put aside, but God was developing that man. And I believe God is developing you. God is preparing you. You've been fighting lions, you've been fighting bears and the Holy Ghost is upon you. If you are that David with that fire of God inside of you, drop that fire emoji right now because your time is coming. You're gonna you're, you're going to confront and you're going to conquer Goliath and that you will turn this spiritual warfare. You will see the shift into a sweet victory, into a spoil that you're gonna bring to your family, to your church and I felt something shifted last week this warfare that was taking place that uh, I, I felt that in the few first few weeks I even talked to my demon slayer friends and others and they're like man I feel exactly the same thing and then as I went to a fast last week and then we're doing one this 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 whole week I really sensed the Holy Spirit saying hey something shifted in the atmosphere the next Sunday we started to see the amount of salvations um, it, it, it was it was crazy um, you know we broke our attendance record and I'm like I am I am like on fire excited for what God is going to do in the next two months. I believe that there's an acceleration that is coming in the next few months. But please understand this opposition that we are confronted with, this opposition, a lot of times behind it is spiritual forces. For the demonic realm, for the spiritual realm, the Halloween, the month of October is very special. Now I am not in any way going to give any credit to the devil. I, I don't believe that this month belongs to demons. Come on somebody. God owns October. Can, can somebody drop that in the chat that God owns October? God owns October 31st. The devil doesn't own it. Witches do not own it. Warlocks do not own it. Sorcerers do not own it. Mediums do not own it. Psychics do not own it. Come on. Witchcraft. None of that stuff owns month of October. I know they're putting up all these signs and they're inviting devils everywhere in the stores and all of those places but I gotta make an announcement right now. God owns the October and therefore in this month we will see victory. We will see breakthrough. We will see it next month. We will see it in December and we're going, this year is going to finish strong for the glory of God. So I want you to position yourself in believer's authority. Position yourself for breakthrough. Position yourself for the shift. I prophesy that churches will grow. I prophesy that the depression will snap. I prophesy that the witchcraft conjured up against the is not going to last. It's going to return to its sender. I prophesy into your life that that dark cloud that is hanging over your life is going to be broken in Jesus' name. I feel even something will happen in the live stream today that is going to shift the realm of the spirit, the spiritual atmosphere in your personal life in Jesus' name. Come on somebody. If you receive that, drop that come on somebody in the chat. Now when it comes to witchcraft, 
man, I, whew, I feel like preaching. But um, let me jump into the short teaching. But watch out because I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop preaching again. Witchcraft. Let's read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 until verse 12. When you enter, the Lord your God is giving you. Do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his own son or daughter in fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens or engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or a spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Guys, did you, did you hear that? God says, you come to the land, you must understand that these lands are, are ruled by spiritual gods, by idols who are spiritual entities in these lands. The lands, they worship these gods, these demons actually. These are not just made up idols, these are demons. And because of this demonic realm that this world is under the sway of Satan, the scripture says, they develop certain practices. Like for example, they sacrifice their children to fire, they practice divination, sorcery, they engage in witchcraft, they cast spells, mediums and spiritists, they consult the dead. And God says this stuff is detestable. This stuff is way off, this is wrong. In fact, under Mosaic law, the penalty for practicing witchcraft was death. Exodus chapter 22 verse 18, Leviticus chapter 20 verse 27. In first Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13 it says that Saul died because of his unfaithfulness. He did not keep of the Lord, uh, keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium. So King Saul, the Bible says that he died because he consulted a medium. He went to a medium, he went to a witch doctor, he went to a witch to get a solution and he died because he went to a witch. Can I tell you from the beginning, for any of you who ever went to witchcraft, you need to repent and you need to submit your life to God because this is what you must understand about witch doctors. Is that witch doctors, they don't cast out demons. They transfer them. Witch doctors, they don't heal the sick. They move a demon from one organ of your body into another. Witch doctors send stronger demons subduing weaker demons thinking the person has their problem solved. Let me say that again. Witch doctors, mediums, people who use potions, people that use sorcery, people that use spells, who help people with their sicknesses and with their demonic oppressions, they don't fix the problem. They transfer different demons and in fact they invite a stronger demon that can cause your demon to be squashed by a stronger demon and then you lost this demon but you got a bigger one. You lost this one but you got a different problem. Witchcraft does not solve anything. If it would solve something, God would never be against it. God says these are detestable things. Saul died for going to a witch doctor. King Saul used to be anointed and at his desperate time he went to somebody. People go to herbalists, people go to witch doctors to, to help you know get, with good luck charms, especially overseas. But in the States people go to psychics, people start you know reading horoscopes, people pull and bring all kinds of demonic objects like dream, dream catches and good luck charms into their houses. People call all kinds of lines where they can talk to the dead and do all of these things and they're involved in opening themselves to the demonic realm not realizing that this stuff, crystals, new age crap, eastern meditations, all of this stuff, it doesn't solve your problem. It replaces it with the bigger problem but initially the bigger problem squashes the smaller problem and then later on you will see that that thing that you invited into your life is going to destroy your life. It's going to eventually kill your life. Now witchcraft was forbidden in the Old Testament as I mentioned. It was denounced in the Old Testament. It was practiced by Egyptians. It was practiced by magicians. It was practiced, practiced by Jezebel. It was practiced by Ninevites. It was practiced by Babylonians. It was practiced by Simon the sorcerer. 
It was practiced by the girl at Philippi who practiced through the spirit of Python, through divination, she was able to foresee things and predict them accurately. And many Christians would fall for it today and say, oh wow, that's a prophetic gift upon her life. But in reality, it was a demon that was causing her to have a spiritual discernment and to have ability to see in the realm of the Spirit and Paul drove out that demon and then she was no longer able to see into the realm of the Spirit through the power of a spirit of Python. We also see that false prophets, they practice witchcraft and that is prohibited. Witchcraft of books and occult were destroyed in the book of Acts chapter 19 and verse 19. Now, I want us to look at the scripture right now that is very famous and a lot of people know and I want us to kind of start from the beginning. For the rebellion, so this is I'm reading uh, on YouTube, I just dropped it on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, those of you who are just tuning in, welcome to the stream. Hit thumbs up. Don't forget to share this broadcast if you're watching me on Facebook as well. And then those of you on Instagram, hop into our YouTube channel so that you can join me for a fuller experience because we're not going to stream all the teaching on Instagram and on TikTok. If you are re-watching, we also welcome you. So let's build a foundation right now what the Bible teaches about witchcraft and what the Bible teaches about all of this stuff and how we can overcome this. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and the stubbornness is as an iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has rejected you from being a king. So let me give you the definition right now for witchcraft. I didn't come up with that definition. I think it's from um, a Reverend Derek Prince whom I highly respect and some of this teaching is heavily inspired by that uh, man of God, Derek Prince. Witchcraft is the attempt to control a person and make them do what you want by any other use except the Holy Spirit. By any other spirit other than the Holy Spirit. Witchcraft is the attempt to control a person and make them do what you want to do by the use of any other spirit than the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never controls. The Holy Spirit produces self-control. Witchcraft produces control. And we're going to look at that right now in just a moment. What witchcraft is, we're going to break it down. But the definition of witchcraft is the attempt to control another person with other powers except the Holy Spirit. Now, witchcraft is the religion of the fallen humanity. Witchcraft is the religion of fallen humanity. Why? Because the root of every witchcraft is rebellion. It's rebellion against God. If there is rebellion against God, there is witchcraft hear me loud and clear. If there is rebellion against authority, if there is rebellion against God, there is witchcraft. Witchcraft is not only with witch doctors. The foundation of witchcraft, it's the national religion of rebellion, humanity that went against God. The Bible clearly states, rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. When you see rebellion, you see already an open door for witchcraft. Rebellious people are control freaks. Rebellious people will dominate. Rebellious people will no longer have self-control. They will have people control. They will seek to control other people. Because rebellion is the national religion of the devil. Rebellion is the religion of humanity right now. Because humanity has rejected God. Humanity has rebelled against God. And therefore, we are under the sway of the wicked one. Now, practice of witchcraft usually contains a few simple things. It contains a priesthood, so like a witch doctor, a medicine man or shaman. shaman. It usually has a ritual um, and there are different rituals for witchcraft practices. It usually will have sacrifices, some kind of an animal sacrifice or a human sacrifice. It will have some kind of a rhythm, a rhythm where there's all kinds of chants or drum beats, as well as there will be some kind of a covenant of binding the participants to one another and to whatever satanic being that is focused on this activity that they are a part of. 
the four main objectives of witchcraft is to connect to a higher spirit, to a realm that is not seen, to connect to a spiritual world to get help. Business people do it, people in Hollywood do it. Uh, we had the opportunity with my wife to meet with one person who is very known on YouTube who is extremely famous um, and she is very uh, influential and she said how many people in Hollywood, in the makeup industry and many other industries who are point blank consulting witch doctors, who are consulting all kinds of people who are helping them to get access to divine information from the spirit realm. This happens in America and she says because of that she was able to grow her business to about a hundred million dollars through this law of new age, the law of uh, it's really through the demonic means and when she started to describe to us how she would connect with demons, I mean this person was way more spiritual than most of the Christians that I know but in the other realm so what happens is through witchcraft people are trying to connect to the spirit realm. Now some people do it in innocence, some people do it honestly completely blind, completely deceived, not knowing that it's dangerous. Maybe you're watching or re-watching and you think it's, it's not a big deal. Hey, I'm just connecting to the good spirits. I have the spirit guides I connect to. They guide me and look at my life like I want to do better. Any other means by which you contact the spirit realm than through the Holy Spirit is illegal, is unauthorized, is profane fire, it's a strange fire, it's wrong. The Bible clearly calls it detestable to God. You're contacting with somebody who pretends to be the angel of light. You are lied to, you are deceived. There's only one way to God and His name is Jesus Christ. Come on, if you believe in that, drop number one in the chat. If you believe that Jesus is the only bridge to God and the Holy Ghost is the only access to the spirit realm. But another objective of witchcraft is to control the forces of nature, such as rain, good weather for harvest, or just control nature. Some people go into witchcraft to control nature to especially in overseas when people begin to look to witchcraft to bring rain, uh, to produce um, you know lightnings, to produce a growth in the agriculture and at first it seems like oh it's not a big deal, look they're helping with the agriculture. My friend God is the one that sends rain and God is the one that sends the sun and He helps our crops to grow and we have to look to God to help with that, not to some kind of a shaman or not some kind of a chant and not some kind of a poach. Come on somebody. Another reason why some people go to witchcraft is to fight off sicknesses, diseases. This especially um, in Africa. This also happens in like former Soviet uh, Union what I've, what I've been to where people would go in so that when they are barren they go to um, a witch doctor or a native doctor or they go to a shaman or they go to this lady who will perform these drinks and make them drink, uh, do some, give them some prayers, some declarations, ask for money of course and then also do some kind of a ritual on them with different items and different things to ward off disease and sickness. My friend, that is demonic 150%. We have one healer, his name is Jesus Christ. This healer, his name is Rafa. He heals by his stripes. He doesn't charge you anything for healing. He doesn't use potions. He doesn't use uh, in uh, chants. He doesn't use all kinds of uh, procedures and formulas. He uses His own blood, He uses His own name and He heals us. And I've experienced that healing. I see people experience that healing and so you don't need to go to witchcraft to find healing. You're like, oh but I prayed to God and God you know like did not heal me so I'm gonna go and right now get a witch doctor to get me a healing. You know what you're gonna get? You're gonna get that sickness removed with some other more terminal and some worse disease and that disease is gonna be incurable and will take your life. And most importantly, you are detestable in the eyes of God. I'm sorry that I said that word but God is very strict. That's like cheating on God. If you're a Christian and you go to a witch doctor for healing, like you're cheating on Jesus. You are cheating on God, okay? Medicine is good, going to the doctor is good, going to a therapist and counselor is good but it's the moment you go to the dark side, you're cheating on God. You are, you are an adulterer spiritually and you gotta not only repent, you gotta renounce and break every covenant and every contract with Satan and demons and throw away everything that the witch doctor has given to you or every charm or every piece of clothing or every piece of thing that they have given to you. 
Another reason why people go to a witch doctor or go to um, those people, and this is the biggest one I know in the States, is to control another person, is to control another human being. They want to, a lot of times in the Old Testament or in the old days, they would try to terrify their enemy and or sometimes even produce a sexual desire within the person that they are interested in by going to a witch doctor. Let me say that again. They would try to gain victory and control over their enemy or cause the person that they like to have feelings for them by going to a witch doctor. I have heard people who have went to the witch doctor so that the witch doctor will put a spell and then put this thing on their person that they like and so that this person will fall in love with them. And then this person would actually fall in love with them and a year later into their marriage this person has their eyes open and they do not want to do anything with the person that they just fell in love with through the, through the witchcraft. Listen, if somebody doesn't like you, they don't like you. That's it. Alright, just move on. You don't need to go to a witch doctor and manipulate them. What that's not love. That's manipulation. That's witchcraft. And, and same thing with controlling other people. Um, I had a person in my group who had a successful business and his enemy, a guy did not like him. This happened right here in my city. I went to a witch doctor, uh, to somebody who kind of does this, uh, I think it was a voodoo, uh, voodoo person who practices voodoo. And so they took a doll and everywhere that this um, priest put the needle in the doll, my friend started to have chronic pain in those areas. His knees gave out. He couldn't use his knees. He couldn't walk anymore. And because she kept punching needles into that doll. And then this guy who was his enemy brought this doll and dropped him, dropped it um, and at, at close to his house like so that he could see it. And he, he was sharing with me in a small group and he's like, man, this was crazy. He's like, I never had problems physically in this area and I started to have tremendous problems in this area. Why? Because somebody did some sorcery on him using all kinds of voodoo dolls. Now as a Christian, but he wasn't walking in Christ at the time. As a Christian, um, this stuff is not going to work, my friend. This stuff who is going to come at you with uh, sorcery and with witchcraft is going to fail and fall flat. The reason why is because you serve Jesus Christ and the Bible says that if there is a witchcraft or curse that's not deserved, it's not going to stick on you. But maybe you feel like somebody placed a witchcraft, maybe your ex, maybe some partner is jealous of you and they have done a sorcery against you. They have done all kinds of charms against your name. Sometimes they take a picture of that person and they bring it to a witch doctor so that they could destroy that person's business. My friend, this is another reason you should walk close to God. So that those witch doctors, so those soothsayers, so those psychics and all of those people who are maybe trying to conjure up something against you, that they will fall flat and that no weapon formed against you will prosper in Jesus' name. I remember reading it in the book of uh, Rebecca Brown where she uh, started to astro project and left her body when she was a witch and she was a very powerful witch at the time and then she was planning to attack these Christians' homes and the devil gave her an assignment to go and cause confusion in the Christian home. And so she left her body and she went with other witches in town and in that region in the spirit realm and they started to come close to the house and to their shock and surprise they saw these gigantic beings with like open swords standing all around the house and there was like flame coming from their armor and they stood there like these giant beings. They were not normal. And so uh, Rebecca Brown was saying, uh, no, uh, not, actually it was not Rebecca Brown, it was the lady who lived with Rebecca Brown who was a Satanist. She said that they tried to throw all kinds of charms at these beings. They tried to throw all kinds of curses on them. And the more they threw at them, the more pain these curses caused the witches. And to that point they got bruised so bad that they had to run for their life from these mighty, mighty giant beings protecting a simple Christian home. And she said, I learned that day, wow, these Christians have spiritual bodyguards. God employs His bodyguards over these Christians. They got an army protecting them. And this army, there is no witchcraft, there is no sorcery that can stand against that. 
Come on. Balaam tried to throw a curse. Nothing. Nothing. God says, not going to happen. Why? Because I'm protecting Israel. They're not perfect, but they're protected. Come on, somebody. Drop that in the chat. I might not be perfect, but I am protected. And I am protected by the blood of Jesus. I am protected by the fire of the Holy Ghost. God says He assigns angels to protect me. God has His own personal entourage. God has His own army. And guess who He leases His army to? Guess who sends he, His army to? He sends it to me and you. So when I sleep at night, I got giants protecting me. When I, when I go about to other countries to preach and minister, I got giants protecting me. And therefore, I am not afraid of the demonic. The demonic is supposed to be afraid of me. Why? Because greater is He that is in me than the one that's in the world. Come on somebody, drop that fire emoji in the chat. If you are just receiving this or if you're joining me, come on somebody, hit the thumbs up if you're just watching us on YouTube. And then those of you on Instagram, don't forget, we will be closing this earlier so that we we will be moving to YouTube in just a moment. We're about to break 1,000 people on YouTube. Come on somebody. The witchcraft is falling off. Demonic plans are falling off. Yes, we broke a thousand K. So those of you who are re-watching, this is a milestone for us um, as we are sharing about this. Now, we've shared about the objectives of witchcraft. We've shared about why people go to witchcraft. Now, let's look at three types of main witchcraft that you are going to have to face or come against. The first type of witchcraft, and this is surprising, it's a lot more subtle, it's a lot, it's a lot more, it's a lot harder to detect, but we have to be aware of it. The first one is witchcraft as the work of the flesh. Um, drop that in the chat. Witchcraft as the work of the flesh. Let me give you the verse right now, and that is in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 and verse 20. Now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. So I want you to notice that works of the flesh is sorcery. Now you would think that work of the flesh is only fleshly things, but I want you to notice that works of the flesh is sorcery. How is witchcraft work of the flesh? I thought witchcraft is only demonic. But remember what I mentioned that rebellion is witchcraft. Remember what we mentioned is that rebellion is an open door to witchcraft. So how is witchcraft part of work of the flesh. I thought that it's only like demonic and sorcerers and witch doctors are into this and how is it part of the flesh? How can it manifest as work of the flesh? In three ways. Witchcraft manifests as the work of the flesh in three ways. Number one, manipulation. Number two, intimidation. And number three, domination. Let me repeat that again. Witchcraft as work of the flesh manifests in three ways. Manipulation. Any sign of manipulation is a sign of witchcraft. Intimidation. Any sign of intimidation is a sign of witchcraft. And domination. Any sign of domination is a sign of witchcraft. When you are seeing that in the family, when the wife starts to manipulate her husband, that's a witchcraft as a form of the flesh. When you see husband dominating his wife, that's a witchcraft. When you see somebody intimidating, that's a witchcraft. Because why are they trying to do all of that? Manipulation, intimidation and domination is all a form of trying to control the other person. All of this is a means of controlling the other being. God has called us to have dominion over the birds. God has called us to have dominion over the flocks. God has called us to have dominion over nature. But He never has given us any dominion over another human being. 
The moment you begin to exercise dominion over another human being, domination, the moment you begin to manipulate and the moment you begin to intimidate your way to get your way with another human being, you are already operating by the demonic spirit that is using your flesh as this foundation ground because what you're trying to do is you're controlling somebody. You're no longer giving them freedom, you're controlling them. Any type of control in relationships is demonic. Any kind of control and how does control manifest itself? Oh, it's very simple. Manipulation, domination and intimidation. So I want to right now encourage you, if as a spouse you have allowed these things in your life, you need to repent today. If you are re-watching this broadcast or you're watching this right now for the first time, work of the flesh. Witchcraft can be a works of the flesh and it seeps into our family. You might not go to a witch doctor, you might not go to a sorcerer, you might not practice charms, but are you controlling another being? Are you using the tactic of manipulation, intimidation and intimidation to control another being? If you are, you are controlling them and therefore you are already having a shade of witchcraft in your life. And that witchcraft must be broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. If some of you have, you have somebody that's controlling you, if you have somebody that's intimidating you, if you have somebody that manipulating you right now, I believe God wants to set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. You need to be able to confront that person and begin to tell that person, say, hey, I'm sorry, but I am not going to be intimidated, manipulated and dominated into this. And I'm sorry, but that's not how I'm going to be. I am not going to be treated like that. You can't rule me. You can't control me. I am not a sheep. I am not a goat. I am not a plant. I am made in the image and likeness of God. And what you are doing right now is that you are operating under witchcraft because witchcraft is controlling another being through any other means except the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit doesn't control. He gives us self-control. Come on somebody. The Holy Ghost gives us self-control. Drop that in the chat. The Holy Spirit gives us self-control. Witchcraft gives us people control. It lets us control other people but you can't really control them without the influence of witchcraft in your life. Mind control, destiny control, through intimidation, through domination, all of that is purely witchcraft on the level of the flesh. On the level of the flesh and so many people, churches operate like that. There are pastors that operate like that. They get their stuff done through intimidation. They get that stuff done through dominating. There, there are parents who live like that. They control their kids. I'm not talking about little infants where you have to raise. I'm talking about even adult kids. They manipulate, they lie, they, they, they do all of that stuff so they can exercise control over another human being. And that is witchcraft. That is wrong. That is not right before God. The Holy Ghost doesn't even do that. He gives us the fruit of self-control. There's no such a thing as spirit control. He fills us, doesn't control us. He leads us, He doesn't drive us. So if God being our Creator does not even do that with us, how much more we are to give freedom to another human being to make their own decisions, to willfully decide and choose and follow this leadership of whatever that we are doing. So many parents destroy their kids through witchcraft. So many spouses destroy their marriage through witchcraft. And no, they never brought a dream catcher into their house, but they brought a witchcraft into their house still. So many couples, so many wives use tears to get their way. So many wives, they would hold sex. Why? Because they are, inti they are intimidated, they're dominating through that. And they're saying, that's it, if you don't do this, I won't give you this. And that's witchcraft. So many men come in and they become dominant, domineering and they don't realize that is witchcraft. You're controlling another human being. And yeah, you might never go to a psychic, you might not read horoscopes and you might not do all of that, but you are in witchcraft as work of the flesh. And you got to repent right now and stop right now. This is not a joke. This is not like, oh, it's not a big deal. No, this is dead, dead serious. How can love 
the exemplified if we're busy practicing witchcraft on our spouses, on our employees, employers, students, children, members. Man, we need to change. Number two is witchcraft as spiritual demonic power. So the first one is witchcraft as a work of the flesh and then the second one witchcraft as spiritual demonic power. So and I'm going to differentiate witchcraft from sorcery. So witchcraft is the power that operates by spells and curses, okay? And sorcery is the power that operates by objects and charms. So let me say that again. Witchcraft is the power of the devil that operates through spells, curses. So it's something that you, uh, you release with your mouth, okay? Sorcery on the other hand mainly operates through objects and through charms and a lot of times also demonic music. Now it also operates through drugs. Greek word for sorcery in Revelation 9.21 is the same word for drugs. Drugs is the demonic gateway into his dark kingdom. Now I know that some of you are going to get offended at me right now but weed marijuana and drugs is an open door to demons. The moment you start taking drugs you are inviting demons. In the New Testament the word sorcery is translated as uh, pharmakia. I think I pronounced it correctly. This is where we get the word pharmacy. Galatians 5.20, Revelation 18.23. Witchcraft and spiritism often use ritualistic use of magic potions and mind-controlling drugs. Using illicit drugs can open yourself, your mind to the invasion of demonic spirits. Engaging in the practice and taking a substance to achieve an altered state of consciousness in the form of witchcraft. Um, a friend of mine, Bob Larson, in his blog concerning drugs, he said this, In Hinduism, marijuana, Ganga, has been used to worship a demon of death and destruction for thousands of years. Bob Larson has confronted possessed people who have never practiced Eastern religions, but God Shiva and other Hindu demons like Kali, Jezebel by taking a joint. Chinese Taoism has long believed that inhaling marijuana is the way to communicate with spirits and tell fortunes. In paganism, pot has been in uh, Odin, the, the god Odin in um, the nor northern um, places. Um, the pot has been used to evoke Freya, another form of Jezebel, a demon that he deals often ministering in Scandinavian um, places. And pot was important to Celtic Druids when practicing witchcraft. Buddhism also employs pot as well, as well as other, um, you know, those kind of religions and close to Hinduism. And pot today is roughly six times stronger than smoked by the hippies before. One out of six people move to heavier drugs when they inhale pot. If you are smoking pot, if you are taking drugs, you are opening yourselves to the demonic 100%. And that's why a lot of people who are drug addicts need deliverance. They don't just need the rehab, they need deliverance. Even after rehab, they'll need deliverance. Now, sorcery operates by objects and charms and then witchcraft operates by spells and by curses. And sorcery also operates through drugs. They, a lot of them, they take drugs, they op it opens their mind to another realm and some people don't even want to do sorcery or witchcraft. They just love drugs and they go into drugs and they get their mind exposed to the demonic. 
they start hallucinating afterwards. And even if when they stop taking drugs, some people still have their minds so broken to the and their minds so susceptible to the demonic attacks. If you are practicing, if you are taking inhaling drugs, taking drugs, inhaling something, smoking pot, I'm going to ask you as a Christian, repent right now. Take all the drugs that you have, go to the bathroom and flush them down the toilet. Get rid of them. You don't need a high no other than the most high. You need the Holy Spirit. Now if you're taking pain meds, you know that's a different story. But if you're addicted to pain meds now, you need deliverance. We're going to be praying in just a moment and I believe the Holy Ghost is going to bring freedom. If you have had drugs and it opened the door, repent, renounce it and receive freedom right now in the name of Jesus. God wants to set you free today and I believe tonight is going to be a powerful night of deliverance and we're going to be praying in just a moment. If you're addicted to drugs, let's believe for God to set you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. So witchcraft as work of the flesh and then witchcraft that works through spells and curses and witchcraft that works through sorcery by objects and by potions, by drugs and as well as by charms. And all of these are wrong. Now let's look at, dive in one more and that is witchcraft that exists in the church. Witchcraft that exists in the church. Let's read the verse in Galatians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Another word pretty much for cast a spell. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Church in Galatia was under a spell of demons. The word bewitched in the Greek is evil eye. The aim of witchcraft in the church is to obscure the revelation of Jesus Christ crucified. Instead of, so what happens is because this witchcraft that the Bible talks about what it does is it hides Jesus crucified from its preaching, from its songs and then as a result of that it pushes away the cross, it throws away the supernatural power of God because when you throw away the cross you throw away the Holy Ghost. Carnality begins to take the place of spirituality and legalism replaces love. Let me say that again. The witchcraft in the church according to Apostle Paul is Jesus Christ no longer be magnified as the Savior and crucified Lord. What this does is it casts a spell upon the church where Jesus and the cross is removed, the power of the Holy Spirit is removed, legalism replaces love and carnality replaces crucified life. Christians no longer live crucified life, they live carnal life. And there's no longer love, there is legalism. There's no supernatural anymore, there's only natural. And there is no more the cross, because cross of course is offensive, there's only self-help. We no longer tell people that they are dead in their sins, we just tell them that they're depressed. Sin becomes a weakness, a mistake, something I'm working on. The love of God gets magnified at the expense of having the fear of God. Grace becomes greasy in the sense that it's an excuse to do whatever you want and that is dangerous. But also what is possible for witchcraft against the church is when witches can come against the church and pronounce spells against leaders and pastors. Sometimes they even bring objects and they bury them in the church's lawn or they put them in the church's property to cause the church to stop growing. There are stories of one pastor, he left the ministry, his wife, you know, uh, 1,000 member church. He leaves the ministry, 1,000 member church, he leaves his wife, he becomes drunk. Turns out 
that the deacon's wife who committed adultery went to a witch and cast a spell on him for excommunicating her for adultery and it worked. He lost his church, he committed adultery, he became drunk and he left his church eventually. Because a deacon's wife that he excommunicated went to a witch, cast a spell on him for kicking her out from the church. Now, I understand at first it may seem like, man, all of us are susceptible to these demonic attacks. Not really. But we must understand and we must be warned that this stuff exists. Uh, I heard one a story of one person who had a deliverance ministry and he noticed that his church was missing a drape, a clock and a pulpit, Bible and an offering box. And church went down in attendance, nobody was showing up. And then God gave him a word of knowledge that there is a witchcraft burial happened in this church. That 14 witches sent someone to steal these items and they buried them under particular place on the church property and when those things were discovered when he got those items back you know they broke that curse the church started to grow and God started to move again and these stories are so many and so different and so unique what I'm saying is not to start going looking for a witchcraft right now if there are struggles in the church and in the ministry but I have to let you know that who benefits from the church not growing who benefits from people leaving the church instead of people coming to church? It is the devil. And so be vigilant. You know, sometimes we notice different signs. You know, I remember there was a time when somebody, you know, put uh, demonic signs in our church. And you know, we, we came against that. We started to break that and then we anointed that wall with oil. I, I don't know if it was gangs that were trying to do that or somebody intentionally wanted to destroy our church. We have to be vigilant. I remember about a month ago before a lot of craziness that started even in my life, my wife noticed that in my yard um, there was this, looked like some kind of a potion that was dropped in my yard. I looked through all of the, it did not look like a dead bird but it was very weird. We, had, we took a photo of it and my wife, she really felt that it was like a demonic charm that somebody put on our lawn. Now not a lot of people know where I live but um, somebody did. And then she had a dream of that, that, that somebody dropped a charm in our house. And so I took that charm, you know, I prayed against it, I burned it and you know, I renounced anything that the enemy would have. And so I want to encourage you right now to be vigilant, especially in the ministry. If, uh, be vigilant about people. Some people who leave, they make threats, okay? I'm not saying to take those personally, but I'm saying to take everything to God and walk in submission to God where the Holy Spirit can guide your life, okay? Don't be afraid of witches and warlocks. Don't be afraid of spells and potions but also don't play games with that and be vigilant. If the enemy comes in, if you start seeing things are being dropped at you like that, you know, take him into prayer and just begin to break him down in the name of Jesus. Begin to break him down in the name of Jesus. That's why the church has to have a very strong prayer life the church, the church has to have prophets in the church and the church has to have apostles as well. The church has to have warriors in the church that, that constantly pray and constantly fast for the church. The leaders in the church are supposed to be spiritual people. People like us, pastors, we have to be spiritual people that the Holy Spirit can guide and lead us and that we can notice the demonic strategies before they come in. Come on, we don't, we don't rely on the knowledge from the witch doctors to know what's happening. Elijah was consulting the king, as telling the, was telling the king of whatever the enemy was planning in his private bedroom. And he was disclosing all the tactics of the enemy and therefore conquering the enemy. And so potions, charms, objects that are thrown into your ministry or something, be vigilant about it. If something is brought to your attention, throw it away. I remember the first uh, one of the uh, uh, duplexes that I had. Uh, the first one that we bought with my wife, it was a drug house before and I right away made a decision I'm going to sanctify it with oil. So I sprayed it with uh, vinegar to kill the smell and then I sprayed it with oil and then as we started to clean up I've noticed that we have, um, there's like a dead cat, dead cat in the basement. And so, and, and I don't know, but I, I just felt wrong. I felt, uh, felt something was off. It was not just a cat, it was something else there. And so, um, 
I started to, you know, we took it, we, we th threw it away. Um, and then I really took um, anointing oil and even anointing water and started to really just pray against it and dedicate that that house is going to be a house of blessing. And that house is not going to be a house where divorce, where death, where sickness will come in. And thankfully, you know, when we lived there, praise God, everything was great. And we sold it for a good price. And uh, it's lived now by other people. And so, um, so I just really want to encourage you with that. Now we're going to come to an end and we are going to be talking about the freedom from witchcraft. I want you to prepare your heart for prayer. So those of you on Instagram, 140 of you, uh, go ahead and jump over to YouTube. I'm going to give you just one more minute to do that. On TikTok, there's 67 of you. Uh, let's come on over to YouTube, log off of, YouTube, uh, of TikTok. You shouldn't be on TikTok too long anyway. <laughs> Stuff. So, and then on YouTube, uh, jump right now. Let's go to YouTube and we're going to be praying in just about two, two three minutes for deliverance from witchcraft. I believe the Lord's going to move. And so uh, if you're jumping from Instagram and TikTok to YouTube, let us know. Say, hey, I'm, I just moved from Instagram and from TikTok. And those of you on YouTube, go ahead and do me a huge favor. Hit thumbs up on YouTube. We're still strong on Facebook, so we're going to still stay on Facebook, but we're going to leave uh, the Instagram and the TikTok right now. So I'll see you guys very soon um, on YouTube and I'll see you on um, all of you from there. Amen. I'm going to read to you uh, these three verses and we're going to get ready to pray. And I'm going to show you the passion of God against witchcraft. Man, this verse ministered to me like crazy. Ezekiel 13, 18, it says the following, Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the women who sew, who sew magic charms on their sleeves and made veils for the heads of people of every height to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people and keep yourselves alive? Man, I want you to hear the passion of God. God is saying, Woe to people who are making witchcraft to hunt His people. And He says, will you hunt the souls of my people and keep yourselves alive? Maybe witchcraft is hunting your soul. You may say, oh that's not possible because I am a child of God. Hey, did you see what I just read? How witchcraft was hunting the souls of God's people? The favorite target of witchcraft is hunting. It's catching. It's snaring our souls, not our spirits. Mind you, it does not say that, will you hunt the spirits of my people? Our spirits are secure. Our spirits are made perfect. It's the soul that witchcraft hunts after. And God says, will you hunt the souls of my people and be alive? Meaning God's like, I know you're hunting their emotions, you're hunting their mind and you're hunting their, their will. But I'm after you. And therefore, I just want to tell every witch, witch doctor right now or person who practices witchcraft, I don't care how big, powerful you are, you have God as your enemy. You may be hunting Christians, you may be attacking us, but I'm going to tell you one thing. God has you as His enemy. And He's going to destroy you if you don't repent. Because that is demonic and God's going to send demons to hell and you're going to go to hell if you don't repent. Now verse 20 and verse 21 and 22. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against your magic charms. I want to tell you something right now. Any charm, that was made against you, God is against it. Mm. God is against every witchcraft that has been made against you right now. God is against every potion. God is against every voodoo that was made against you. Every charm, every spell and every curse, God is against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, if you receive that right now, that God is for you and He is against that magic witchcraft, that spell those curses against you and he says by which you hunt souls like birds see you're a free bird you gotta fly but witchcraft wants to hunt you snare you i will tear them from your arms and let the souls go the souls you hunt like birds 
I will also tear off your veils and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall no longer be as prey in your hand. Then you shall know that I am the Lord." Mm. Man, I hear, I feel the passion of God in here. I feel the heart of God for you right now. He said, I will tear the charms from your arms and I will let the souls go. Mm. I will tear off the veils and I will deliver my people. He's talking about witchcraft still. So if you're under that witchcraft, God says, I will deliver my people out of your hand. He's speaking to witchcraft and He says, I'm going to deliver my people out of your hand. I'm going to tear the veils off. I'm going to tear them from your arms. He said, I'm against this witchcraft. And He said, my people will no longer be a prey in your hand. Come on somebody, God is about to set somebody free. God is about to liberate somebody. God is about to tear somebody. God is about to pull somebody out from the witchcraft and to tear the witchcraft apart in your life in Jesus' name. God is about to set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to get ready. Man, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this room right now. Freedom is going to be released in Jesus' mighty name. If you are, so this is uh, chapter Ezekiel 13 verses 20, 21 and 22. I want you to prepare your heart for prayer. If there has been any witchcraft done by your business partners, by your ex, any witchcraft that was done by your previous employer, employees, by your ex-girlfriend, your ex-spouse, or somebody who out of jealousy went to a sorcerer and conjured up different things. Maybe they brought ground or soil from the cemetery, dropped it in the front of your porch. Maybe they brought some other freaky stuff to intimidate you. And maybe you feel like somebody stole your mind and put your mind somewhere else or, or stole something from you and they hunted you. They hunted your soul. God's about to go to war on your behalf. God's about to set you free. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is about to break that yoke in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get ready to pray. Just drop that prayer emoji right now on, on YouTube. Drop that prayer emoji on YouTube as we're going to come against that in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. First of all, I want us to repent of any witchcraft that we have allowed in our own home through control, rebellion, domination and also intimidation. Come on, let's just take a moment, let's repent. Drop that in the chat. Say, Lord, I repent for allowing to, for witchcraft to work through me. Just drop that in the chat. Say, Lord, I repent for allowing witchcraft to operate through me. I repent for the control. I repent for the domination. I repent for intimidating. I repent for controlling. Lord, I am sorry. If you ever dambled into witchcraft by talking to the dead, going to uh, uh, psychics and others, I want you to right now just repent of that as well. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. God forgive me. Lord wash me with your precious blood in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have demonic objects in your house, throw them out. If you, if you have uh, horoscopes in your house, just repent of them and throw them out. Uh, if you are into voodoo, throw that out. Ouija boards, throw that out. Crystals, throw them out. Palm reading, throw that stuff out. And all kinds of handwriting analysis, tea leaves and all of this stuff. You got to throw that stuff out in the name of Jesus. And you got to throw that out today, not tomorrow but today. If you smoke pot or any other drugs, I want you to throw that out. Go and flash down the toilet. God is going to deliver you. God is going to set you free. But you got to get your life clean. You got to clean up your house in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demonic and occultic literature paintings, merchandise that is demonic in nature. Burn it and throw it away or throw it away in the name of Jesus Christ. God wants to set you free but you got, there's a role to play. 
So we repent for witchcraft through domination, intimidation and, and control. We throw away anything that resembles the demonic, including drugs. And right now, I want you to receive the prayer of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for your grace. I know that you can deliver from a distance. I know you, you can deliver from a distance. And I pray right now that the same anointing, Lord God, that you said in your word, that operated through our Savior Jesus Christ, that this anointing is going to come right now on this live stream. I pray that for those that are watching this and for those that are going to be re-watching this, who have had witchcraft, spells, different objects, potions done against them and their minds have been caught in a trap. Their souls have been caught in a web and their will has been almost like sabotaged. And there's this warfare that is going on against them because of witchcraft that was done against them by some powerful witches and some powerful people. In the name of Jesus, my God right now is coming against you witchcraft, is coming against you sorcery. He is ripping your, tearing your veil. My God, according to Ezekiel 13, 20, 21 and 22, He is tearing off your veil right now. He is tearing your arms. He is tearing your stronghold right now in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the blood of Jesus, I come against that charm. I come against that witchcraft. I come against that sorcery that was done against you. In the name of Jesus, let it fall off of your life right now. Be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, fire against that witchcraft that has hunted your soul. I speak for your soul to be free right now. I speak for your soul to be free right now. Your mind to be free. Your emotions to be free. Your will to be free. I speak for your finances to be free from the grip of that witchcraft. My God. I speak for your emotions, your affections to be free. That jealousy against your love life. I break that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I agree with every believer. Come on somebody, drop that right now in the chat. If you are praying with me, let's pray together. Let's not just, let's just not pray with me. Pray, pray with me right now. Agree with me because there are believers that are needing this deliverance right now. If you don't need this, somebody needs it. Agree with me that something is going to loose right now in the realm of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, every witchcraft that has sabotaged your health, be broken right now. Every witchcraft that sabotaged your mind and your mental, uh, your mental stability, be broken right now. Every witchcraft that has sabotaged your emotions, you're constantly disturbed, there's doubt, there's confusion, there's fear, be broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every witchcraft that has sent demons on assignment, you're hearing voices, you're seeing spirits and objects showing up during the night, some in the dream. Be broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire on that witchcraft. Lord God is delivering you right now. He says that in Ezekiel. I am delivering my people. He says that in Ezekiel and right now He is doing that. Your life will no longer be a, play, a, a prey. God is delivering my people out of His the hand of witchcraft. He's delivering His people out of the hand of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost fire in Jesus' name against that witchcraft. Holy Ghost fire in Jesus' name against the trap and that plan of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Be delivered. You witchcraft be broken right now. You demons operating behind the witchcraft be defeated and cast out right now. Out in Jesus' mighty name. 
out in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, draw the people right now. Deliver your people out of the hand of witchcraft. That they will no longer be a prey in Jesus' name. If you're watching me right now and the Lord brought something to you uh, of what you need to throw away or what you need to do, obey the Lord. But I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pray right now also for healing. If you are sick in your body, place your hand on the place where there is pain. The anointing of the Holy Spirit knows no boundaries in distance or time. Those of you who will rewatch this, the same anointing is going to come right now as you are rewatching it. Just place your hand there where there is pain. I rebuke that sickness right now. I agree with that brother and that sister. I command deaf ears to open. I command blind eyes to see. I command eczema, rashes, skin infection. Go right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing right now to gastritis. I speak healing right now to digestive problems in the name of Jesus Christ. Stomach ulcers. Go right now. Leave this body in the name of Jesus. I speak healing right now to every place where there's a cancer cell, where there's growth or where there's tumor or where there's a cyst, ovarian cyst. Be disconnected right now. Be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Endometriosis. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that asthma. I rebuke that thyroid problem right now. And I speak healing for hormonal imbalance in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who don't have a smell or taste, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. For those that have a flu, this very bad flu that you are battling with right now and even as you're watching, you're feeling it right now. I break the grip of flu right now over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a turnaround from this moment on right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed from that COVID. Be healed from that flu in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak healing to that lower back. I speak healing to those spasms, that sharp pain in Jesus' mighty name. Come Holy Spirit. I rebuke every allergy, seasonal allergies. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sprained ankle, be healed in Jesus' name. I speak healing to the spine right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed in your spine in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father.